This program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes with sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. Hank, what happened to Coach Russell? Oh, Reese wasn't feeling well, so TC drove home. You gotta watch these kids, they're terrific. They're really getting into their parts here. <laughs> You are making a grievous mistake. I've done nothing wrong. Your words are meaningless as the serpent himself speaks through you. You must be banished from our midst for all eternity. Stop! You would condemn an innocent woman to death? She has within her a soul as decent as any of you. You are mistaken, sir. Clearly she has thee under her evil spell. You must pay for the havoc you have brought to our town. She has been tried and convicted of witchcraft and sentenced to be burned at the stake. Hand me the torch. Don't worry, Charity. It won't be a real fire. <laughs> That's what you think, lover boy. <laughs> so long, Charity. So sad to see you go. <laughs> Not. Since thou came to our God-fearing village, our lives have been plagued by bizarre and mysterious happenings. With this torch, we will rid ourselves of the pestilence thou hast brought here with you. I wish. Little do you know, Kay. Your good friend Tabitha is going to make your wish come true. <laughs> what are you doing, Ivy? I want to ask you a question, Sam. You told me once that you loved me that you would love me forever. I want to know if you meant it. Or were you just lying to me? That's not a fair question, Ivy. I mean, we were different people then, leading different lives. Real love doesn't just wither and die, Sam. I have never loved anyone the way I loved you. Not before, not since. I will love you until the day I die. Admit that it's the same for you. Never stopped loving me. Uh, just checking in, Father. Nothing new. T well, actually, I'm outside the high school waiting to pick up Ivy. Apparently, we funded some school pageant or some such nonsense. She. Uh, no, no word from Sheridan yet. Well, she hasn't been back to her cottage or deigned to return any of my calls, so I. Just calm down, Father. I'm handling the situation. I assure you, it's a tempest in a teapot. No one's going to investigate Martin Fitzgerald's disappearance. Good evening. Good evening. Is the manager back yet? Uh, no, I don't think he is. Will you give him a message? Tell him that Luis Lopez Fitzgerald would like to see him. Your name is Fitzgerald? There's another Fitzgerald here this evening. Here in the hotel? My father. He's at the bar. It'd be after all these years. Can that man be my father? The only way I'm going to find out is if I go to New Mexico. And if Martin Fitzgerald is there, then everything's fine. It'll all be okay. And if he's not, then I'm a killer. What are you going to do, Louise? I'm going to get him to tell me the truth. It's the last thing he ever does. I can't wait for the car to show up. I've got to take you to the train station myself. And Gwen's going to be here any minute. You understand, don't you, Teresa? Yes, Gwen would be hurt if she found me and you together. Right, and I don't want to hurt her. Gwen, the battery's dead. Well, are you sure? Maybe the engine's just cold. Well, I... No! Damn, it's dead! Now there's no way I'm going to get you to the train station before Gwen shows up. God, I should have just told her that you were here. Now this is really going to look bad. Oh, well, not too much further and I'll be at the cabin with Ethan. Just the two of us all alone, all night. Oh, could this be the night he puts an engagement ring on my finger? He said he had a surprise for me. <laughs> Okay, 
I need a minute, Teresa. I need to think. God, that's probably Gwen. Are you gonna tell her I'm here? Gwen finds out I'm here. She'll be mad at Ethan. She might even dump him. And then he'll be all mine. It's okay. You don't have to. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I... I just panicked. I don't even remember my lines. I ruined everything. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, it's just a rehearsal. I mean, you took on a lot playing the witch that gets burned at the stake. No wonder you're rattled. Miguel is right. I think we should all just take a break and try to relax. Maybe that would help. I'll tell you. Okay. Can I speak to you for a moment out in the hall? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. It's only a play. You know, Kay's not going to be using a real torch, and there won't be a real fire. Still, Miguel, I mean, you can't blame Charity for freaking out. It did look real, and after what she's been through with her mother dying in a fire, I don't blame her. I meant what I said earlier, Charity. If you don't want to do it, I'll be happy to take over your part. I don't think it'll come to that, Kay. If you have any problem with your lines up there, I'll be glad to prompt you so you don't need to worry about that. How <laughs> thoughtful, Jessica. But it's up to you, Charity. Oh, bats and bats. I wish Kay Bennett would stop butting in so I can get on with my work. I've got the perfect moment here. They'll think the smoke is special effects and they won't know that it's a real fire until little charity is all ashes and cinders. She thinks it's horrible, Tabitha. Well, Tabitha thinks Timmy should keep his bleeding heart opinions to himself. Unless he'd like to find out firsthand what it's like to be martyred. Oh no, Tabitha. Timmy would rather be locked up with Fluffy than burnt at the stake. <laughs> Tell me about it, straw boy. And if you'd done a better job defending me 300 years ago, I might have been spared myself. But oh no, Timmy had to be a big show off. Timmy doesn't know what Tabitha's talking about. Well, never you mind. Maybe I'll tell you about it one day. Timmy can't hear anything up there. What if Charity decides to quit the part? I don't care what the brat decides. One way or another, she's going to be toast tonight. Burnt toast. <laughs> Burnt toast. <laughs> Ivy, I'm glad you followed me in here. I knew it. Not for the reason you think. I mean, it is time that we've had this out. Once and for all. Any feelings I've ever had for you are gone. No. I love one woman and one woman only. And that is my wife. But you never told her about us. That's gotta mean something. It means I see no reason to hurt her by telling her about something that died a long time ago. It's odd. What did I do with that key TC gave me? This is Grace Ben. Uh, Mr. Green. Oh, no, please, Julian. Um, do you have a moment? Uh, what can I do for you? But when my wife mentioned she was coming here this evening, I was wondering if perhaps you'd seen her. I understand you're not telling Grace about us now, but what about when you first met? I've already explained that to you. Grace had just survived a traumatic fire. She had amnesia. I was just trying to build her confidence to convince her that I was always going to be there for her. You always were the hero type. Maybe if I'd been more of a damsel in distress, he would have stayed with me. That's not why we broke up, and you know it. I still 
remember my wedding night to Julian, realizing I'd married the wrong man. And then you found me, and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt who I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. But it was too late. God, what a fool I was! Hello? Gwen? Okay, here's the thing, sweetheart. I'm stopped by the side of the road, just past that gas station on Route 9, and the road behind me is clear, but what's ahead is not. Well, how does it look? It's hard to say. Visibility is terrible. The radio just said people should stay off Route 9 because of the big snow drifts. I don't know if I can make it, Ethan. Oh, uh, that's terrible. I know! I've been so looking forward to this time away with you. I don't know, maybe I'm just being a scaredy cat. Maybe I should just try and drive on through. I don't know, what do you think I should do? Should I go home or should I try and make it? What do you think Luis will do if he finds out that this man in New Mexico using Martin's social security number is his father? Would he really arrest him? I don't know. I've never seen him this upset about anything. Of all my children, Luis took Martin's disappearance the hardest. If this man is my husband, I want to know too. All these years, I've agonized over why he left, or whether he was alive or dead, but... I wonder if Luis, his own son, has him arrested, whether finding out the truth will be worth it. What are you doing? I'm going over there with you. No. I've waited years for this moment. I'm gonna do it on my own. You recognize him when you see his face? Maybe. Maybe not. It's been a long time. Besides, if it is my father, I went to a lot of trouble to dump his family years ago. Who's to say he hasn't changed his look since then? Then how will you know? I will. You know, when I was a kid, I used to look at my father like he was God. Maybe that's why I hate him so much for walking out on our family. Leaving mom to work her fingers to the bone all these years. Your name Fitzgerald. What's it to you? Bastard. Hey, why don't we go over our lines together a few times? Maybe that'll help you stay calm when you get back up there. Go, Romeo, go! Get Charity back on stage so we can get on with our little bumper. And she can join our beloved mum in heaven. <laughs> so if anyone would want to spend eternity there. Charity. You don't like Miguel. Stay away from him. I've heard this song before. I just don't remember where I know it from. Was it from before the fire? Maybe you're starting to get more of your memory back. I don't know. There's just something about it. What's wrong? What's Kip ended up to now? I don't know. She's a sly one. Unfortunately, she doesn't realize she's working against herself. I guess I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. Who's the devil of that? Gwen, uh, give me a sec. I'll be right there. Gwen said she might not make it. I, I want to be honest with her and tell her that you're here, but... She might get upset that I didn't tell her before. Now she might not even get here anyway. I can't tell you what to do, Ethan. It's up to you. If 
Nathan, are you okay? Uh, fine. I was just thinking of what to tell you. I hate to say this, Gwen, but maybe you should turn around and go back home. It's not worth the risk to drive through the snow. You could get stuck or slide on the ice. It's too dangerous. I just want to be with you. I'd pick you up myself, but my car won't start. What were you doing in your car? Well, I left my headlights on, and now the battery is dead. This is just great. We're both stranded apart from each other. Well, I'm in a warm cabin. I hate thinking that you're out there in your car. I'll be fine. Do you really think I should turn around and go home? I hate the idea, believe me. I had so many plans for us tonight, holding you in my arms, but I would never forgive myself if something happened to you. You're my world, Gwen. This is just so rotten, Ethan. Not just for me, but for you too. You're up there all by yourself. You're gonna be so lonely. Who are you calling a bastard? It's your name, Fitzgerald. Yeah? What of it? Oh my god, you're alive. Well, I was the last time I checked. When are you two gonna tell me what the hell's going on here? Am I supposed to know you? I don't think we've ever met. But you and I have. You really don't know me? Sorry, should I? No. It was a long time ago when you ran out on Mama and all us kids. What? I'm Louise, damn it, I'm your son! I'll get the battery recharged and head into town first thing in the morning. Right now, tomorrow seems like forever. I promise I'll make it up to you. As soon as I get to town, we'll make plans to fly south where the sun shines and nothing can stop us from being together. Are you sure you're gonna be all right up there? I'll be fine. I'll make a bite to eat and then hit the sack. Uh, get an early start. Sounds pretty boring compared to what you'd be doing if I was there. You're telling me. Hey, be careful, Gwen. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. I'm gonna miss you. I miss you too. I think you did the right thing, Ethan. I have never seen you before in my life. You better take your friend home. He's had a few too many. Don't you turn your back on me. Not now. Look at me! Look at the sun that you ran out on. What's he talking about? Oh, don't listen to him, dear. He's probably drunk. The hell I am. You don't distill enough alcohol in the world to wash this ugly truth away. Tell me, what's it feel like to see one of the kids that you walked out on? You gotta have some questions. I mean, Teresa... She's grown into a beautiful young lady. Probably a lot like Mama was all those years ago. And Miguel, he was just in diapers when you left him without a father. You'd be proud of him. But you don't have the decency that God gave a snake. What's it feel like to have to face up to what you did? You low-life coward. You are making a big mistake. Is he? You know, I always suspected you were a two-timing womanizer. And now I'm sure of it. Just how many other wives do you have out there, huh? How many kids do you have running around? This is nuts. I don't have another wife, and I don't have any kids. You lied to her, too. I mean, how do you even look at yourself in the mirror in the morning? Well, probably because you have no conscience. Is everyone around here crazy except me? Look, I'm not the guy you're looking for. I don't have another wife. If I did, I wouldn't be married to this one. <laughs> Hold on, I've got another question Save for your you. brush, Sharon. No, just wait a minute, Louise. You want to make sure it's him, don't you? No, I don't know where Ivy could have gone to, Julian. Did she know you were picking her up? Oh. Tell me the truth, Hank. Do you think Luis could have gone to New Mexico to search for his father? Well, I don't see how he could have. Doesn't he have to work? That's why I'm worried. I spoke to your brother, Sam, and he told me that Luis had the rest of the day off. That he's not on duty until late tomorrow. So he could have gone anywhere. So I guess you tried Luis at the youth center then? Yeah, he wasn't there. Neither was Sheridan. That's strange. I don't know why, but he makes me nervous. Mr. Crane, what are you doing here? Well, looking for Mrs. Crane. What else? She's forgotten a prior social commitment. Uh, have you seen her at the moment? Yes, earlier, but I haven't seen her in a while. Um, if you all would excuse me, I was tracking down some props for the rehearsal. Oh, uh, by all means. I'll just track down my wife and extricate her from any entanglement she may have gotten herself into. 
Dry your eyes, Ivy. There's no point in crying over something that happened years ago. It's dead and buried. Yeah. It'll never be dead and buried for me, Sam. You've got to get on with your life. Look, I love my wife and I'm happily married, just as I'm sure you are too. Oh, God, you can't possibly believe that. There are all kinds of happiness. And I don't have any of them with Julian. Haven't you been listening to a word I said? I married the wrong man. I should have married you. Stop it, Ivy. But you have to understand why I did it. I was young and confused. And I was overwhelmed. A crane, power, and money can do that to you. Yeah. Well, it wasn't worth it. I'm really sorry that you're not happy, but there's nothing that I can do about it. My concern right now is for Grace and her happiness. That's why I never want her to know about us. Um, maybe I better go over my lines by myself. Charity, I don't understand. I don't either, but I think I'd just like to be alone right now. Sure. Whatever you want. What happened? I don't know. I mean, one minute we're doing okay, working towards where we used to be before the fire, and then, bam. Suddenly Charity's looking at me like she's afraid of me again. Don't take it personally, Miguel. I mean, Charity's got a lot going on being the star of the pageant. I'm sure she's just overwhelmed. I guess. But it seemed like she was getting her confidence back. Until I got too close to her. Maybe you should stay away from Charity for a while. Just give her some space, some room to figure out what she wants. I'm sure she's just under a lot of pressure. She must be. After tonight, I won't come around as much. I better go see if Charity's ready to go over her lines. Forgive me for being an old busybody, but I was back there, uh, working on the costumes, and I sensed you were having a little trouble, Charity. Oh, thanks, Tabitha, but I I'll work it out. Well, if you're quite sure... But, um, I have read quite a bit about the New England witch trials, and I thought maybe I could be of some help with your character. Poor Charity. With an acting coach like Tabitha, she's doomed. Dan, what are you doing here? Oh, don't tell me you locked yourself in. Oh, uh, I'm okay. Yeah, now that I found you. Poor well, baby. Got all the props, and uh, I guess the kids are anxiously waiting for me, so I guess we gotta go. Uh, actually, they were doing okay without him, but I would like to find Miguel another hat. Oh, can it wait? <laughs> Why wait? I mean, it's like I'm here, you know? I'll just look and it'll take a second. There. Oh, there it is. Well, I guess we can go now. You know what? I have a better idea. Let's not. What? Well, I mean, what's the hurry? I mean, there isn't a daughter or a niece in sight. I don't think we have ever made love in a closet before. Mm. Wow. I'm really into new ideas too, but in the closet? Right now? Well, yeah, I can't think of anything I would rather do or anyone I would rather do it with. I know this isn't the evening that you had planned, so it, uh, just pretend like I'm not here and go on about your business. What business? 
Well, you know what I mean. I don't want to be in your way. Uh, Teresa, don't be silly. This isn't your fault. And what do you say we get a bite and turn in so we can get an early start? That sounds great. Um, I'll fix you something to eat. No, I'll do it. I even brought up a hamper with food in it. No, uh, l let me. Uh, if you really want to do something, bring in some more wood for the fire. It's a, it's a little chilly in here. Sure. I'll be right back. Teresa, do you really think I did the right thing with Gwen? What else could you do? You, you didn't want her to drive in all of this snow. I could have been straight with her and told her you were here. It's just like you to want to be honest, but there are times when being honest can be more hurtful than a little white lie, and I think this was one of them. I guess. You don't know it yet, but you're with the woman you're supposed to be with. What's your full name? Francis Xavier Peter Fitzgerald. My friends call me Pete for short. Luis. Let me see your ID. I shouldn't show it. Show me your ID. Never went by the name of Martin? I don't even know a Martin Fitzgerald. And from the sound of it, I'm glad. He sounds like a real jerk. You must be his son. You sure act like him. Well, how was I to know they were looking for another Fitzgerald? He's right. I am a real jerk. I just got so mad, I knew I was thinking. You wanted him to be my father as much as I did. For your mother's sake. It's just so she'd finally know what happened to her husband. Sure, that's why? For my mother? I've been through this already, Luis. I mean, what other reason would I have? Besides, what does it matter now? We're back to square one. Not quite. I know where the guy works who's using my father's social security number. I'm gonna go back there and check it out. If we strike out with that guy too, then chances are my father's dead. Then what? And there's only one thing left to do. Find out how he died. because they have servants to do everything. But I'm dead without one. Mama, do you know what I can make? saying where I am because Luis will hear. Hi, Mama. It's me. I just wanted to let you know that I am safe and sound and that I am going to be home tomorrow. Um, I'm with a friend, but don't worry. I love you, Mama. Bye. Mama? Um, I was right. I think fate's on my side after all. Bye. So how's dinner coming? Well, to tell you the truth, I think it's going to take a little longer than I thought. Oh, it's not a problem. We're not in a hurry to get anywhere. We're going to be here all night. Mom? Where are you, Mom? 
Jessica, if she wasn't our daughter. Hi, uh, what's up? Hi, Dad. Hey. Um, the lady called who works with you in the shop part time. Uh, yeah, uh, Mrs. Berman. Right, um, she said she's having a problem and she needs you to call her back right away. Okay, great. Guess we'll have to take a rain check. Yeah. You got it. What were you two doing in here anyway? Oh, you know, I think I'll just tell you about that when you're a little older. Mom! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. Don't be. I was rather enjoying watching you reject your wife's amorous advances. Well, I wouldn't have if you hadn't been here. Then I'm glad I was. Well, stop it, Ivy. I mean, you act like we're still involved. We're not. And for the last time, what you and I had in the past is over. Well, the past may be over, Sam. But the future's yet to come. You strike me as being such a, a bright girl, Charity. Why do you think you're having trouble remembering your lines? Mm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Eons ago, I, I, I did one or two school plays myself, and, and I had a wonderful trick. I pretended that I had to memorize the lines for an exam. And as I did, usually very well on tests, it worked like magic. That's a good idea, Tabitha, but Charity wasn't having any trouble until we got to the part where she was supposed to be burned at the stake. Actually, it was the torch that set me off. It just kind of threw me. I don't know why. Hmm. Interesting. But still, you wouldn't want to back out now. Well, I only caught a few moments of your performance, but I could tell you were an absolute natural. It would be such a shame to give up such a marvelous role. Well, I don't want to. Of course. But... <laughs> if I were in your shoes, I don't know how brave I'd be. I'd probably just turn tail and run. Never mind all the people who've gone out of their way to support me and give me a boost. Sometimes you just have to let the people you love down and think of yourself. No, I'm not going to back out. Not after all that they've done for me. You're sure? Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Charity's going to keep going. Um, Tabitha, why don't you tie me up? Make it look like I really can't move. Oh, oh yes. I'll do my best. By the time Tabitha gets through with her, it's not only going to look real, it's going to be real. Now, now, Kester. You can't always get your way. I never do. I don't remember all that much from my Girl Scout days, but <laughs> this should do the trick. Dean, he couldn't squirm his way out of that one. Well, good luck, all of you. Break some bones. Isn't that what I say? <laughs> so, Charity, you're sure it's okay if I pretend to light the fire again? Charity, your goose and everything else is about to be cooked. Oh, Pilar, you scared me. And you scare me, Mrs. Crane. I saw Sam Bennett come out of that closet just a moment ago. So what if you did? So he didn't look happy. Isn't it time you accepted the fact that Sam is no longer a part of your life? I'll never accept that, Pilar. And I'll tell you why he's unhappy. Because I am making it difficult for him. I am reminding him of what we used to have. Why? To what end? Because I still love him, and I want him to love me again. Even though you know it's at risk. I don't care. I want Sam back.
Oh, it's me again, Father. I thought I'd give you an update before I go back inside the school to try to find my damn fool wife. Yeah, she's running around in there someplace doing God knows what. I may have spoken too soon earlier. Uh, Sheridan and Luis Lopez Fitzgerald are MIA. But for all I know, one or both of them are in New Mexico right now. Father, stop. Please, you stop yelling. I know it means big trouble, but not only for us. For anybody who gets too nosy about the whereabouts of Martin Fitzgerald. Damn it. Still locked up tight as a drum. Just have to come back tomorrow morning. Well, I'm coming with you. First thing. Linder Industries. Yeah, this is Martin Fitzgerald. Oh, this is wonderful. They said snow plows will be coming soon. I don't have to go home. I'll just wait in the gas station until the roads are clear, and then I'll go up to the cabin and see Ethan. Oh, he's going to be so surprised to see me. God-fearing village, our lives have been plagued by bizarre and mysterious happenings. With this torch, we'll rid ourselves of the pestilence thou hast brought here with you. Do not be afraid, Miss Standish. Once Charity gets her memory back, it's going to happen soon. I'll never get it again. This should put a smile back on Kay's face. Do you really have to do this, Tabitha? For the last time, Timmy, I told you it's either charity or us. <laughs> 